Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. What I'm going to take you through here is how we oxidize a secondary alcohol. Now the example I'm going to use for this is this structure here which is pentan-3-ol. Now I can tell it's pentan-3-ol because if I number my carbon chain I've got one, two, three, four, five, so I've got five carbon chain which is pent and I can see the OH group here is quite clearly positioned on carbon number three and so that's pentan-3-ol. Now, I'm going to react to this, and specifically, the reason I'm showing this video is this is an example of a secondary alcohol. Now, in order to examine how this is a secondary alcohol, I'm going to have a quick look at this middle bit here, this functional group positioning in the middle of the chain. What I've got here is a carbon connected to the OH, and that carbon itself is bonded to two other carbons and one hydrogen. Now, remember, all our videos are related to OCRA spec, and what you can see is this H at the bottom here, which is what OCR likes to put the focus on. The fact there's only one H there means that this is a secondary alcohol, and the symbol for that is often a 2 with a 0 above it. For me personally, I concentrate on the fact that there are two carbons either side, but really it's the same thing. But it's just worth noting that in OCR mark schemes, they tend to concentrate on this uh, single H. Now, we're going to react this with acidified potassium dichromate, and I've got this at the top of the screen, and I'm going to keep that there throughout the video, because I can't emphasize enough, just like I've done in the primary alcohol video, that it's the same oxidizing agent all the time for organic chemistry, OCRA, and the color change is always going to be the same as well. Remember, we like to learn that OMG, orange makes green, for this particular oxidizing agent, and you must know that it is acidified, which is why I've got that there as well. So, let's have a go at oxidizing it. Okay, so here's our reaction. And um, we can see here what we've made is our pentan 3 ohm product. So we've got pentan 3 ohm over here. Now, the functional group is a carbon, which is going to be double bonded to an oxygen. So inside this molecule here, what we've got is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And then we've got the rest of the chain on either side. The rest of the chain could be symmetrical, like it is in this case, or it could be non-symmetrical. It doesn't really matter. And as I mentioned in the other video as well, if you've watched the uh, primary alcohol one, you can see that whenever we react an alcohol, we've also got some H2O kicked out. Now, this particular reaction, OCR really do have a push for this to say that it should take place under a reflux, um, but it can take place under a distillation. You can do this under a distillation. Um, to be honest with you, I'd go with I'd go with OCR on this because you know play the game a little bit. Go with the reflux for this one. Um, but that's the continuous heating and reheating of the sample where all the vapour products released are condensed um, and returned to the reaction vessel for further reaction. Um, now tertiary alcohols, which I did mention I would go through in this video as well if you've watched the primary alcohol video, they don't oxidise at all. Take this example here. So this is 2-methyl propan 2 op now this is an example of a tertiary alcohol and I've not even written the equation for it because I don't want to even hint to the fact it could oxidize because it won't. No matter how much oxidizing agent you go for that, it's not going to oxidize to an aldehyde or a ketone or whatever. And what we've got for the primary alcohol is oxidation to an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. And what we've got for the secondary, as we've just seen, is to make this ketone on the right um, of the screen. Now this tertiary alcohol here, this can't become either of those and it's also on the same screen at the moment because what I really want to make clear is that neither of the secondary or tertiary can be a carboxylic acid, so neither of them can become that carboxylic acid like the primary can. The secondary, because it's not really got the space, it can't fit in, it's not got the CH group that it can lose to oxidize further into that carboxylic acid around that carbon in the middle. And the tertiary, because well, you can't, for the same reason, it's got no CH, but also it's not even taken one oxidation step. What we're concentrating on is this CH feature that is in both the uh, secondary alcohol at the start, and it's also in the primary. If you've got that CH bond on that functional group carbon, so you can see here this carbon would still have a H on it, then it can take that extra step for oxidation with that oxygen, but it hasn't got that now. It's the ketone on the right hand side over here and the primary alcohol when it becomes the aldehyde still has that CH have a look at that video to see that and obviously as the primary alcohol from the start we can go right through to the carboxylic acid and bypass that aldehyde step. I hope that clears up some oxidation for you uh, of the secondary alcohols and the tertiary I suppose as well. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlist and until then happy revising.